so hello and welcome to our ninth lesson in our study of mathematical biology 2 so in this video we'll talk about the diffusion equation and how to derive it okay <coughs> so let's begin so what is diffusion you know diffusion is just the movement of particles from a higher concentration to a lower concentration that is what diffusion is and the diffusion equation is a parabolic partial differential equation all right so i'm sure most of you have taken courses in partial differential equations and you know that when you have second order because the diffusion equation happens to be a second order partial differential equation we can classify them as elliptic parabolic and hyperbolic okay so the diffusion equation is a parabolic partial differential equation so in physics it describes the macroscopic behavior of many micro particles in brownian motion resulting from the random movements and collisions of the particles so in mathematical biology which we are studying we incorporate that into especially disease models which spread from one country with many cases that is which spread from a country which has many cases of that particular disease to another with no or small cases right so with the COVID-19, for instance, it started from China. Several countries were not having it, and people started traveling from China to those countries, and the other countries also started having it. So as at that time, China was a higher concentration for that particular disease, COVID-19, and the other disease, the other countries were having no cases so they were having low number of cases so they were lower concentration so you can see that diffusion took place right movement of from higher concentration to a lower concentration so the diffusion equation in one dimension or just one special variable is given by this relation here del p del t is equal to d del squared p del s squared where the D is what we call the diffusion constant or the diffusivity. Okay, so that's it for the D. It is called diffusion constant or diffusivity. Right, so that's a constant of diffusion. And so in two dimensions, or when you have two spatial variables, the diffusion equation is given by what you can see here right so you can see that here we just have x and y so those are the two special variables that we are talking about and you know that the d is what we call the diffusion constant or the diffusivity okay so the diffusion constant um has a dimension of length squared per time all right so that's a dimension for the diffusion constant and it's a measure of how efficiently the particles disperse from a high density to a low density right so for example in blood hemoglobin the molecules have a diffusion coefficient of order 10 exponent minus 7 centimeter squared per second so using the same concept then one can write the diffusion equation in 3d and 4d that's we have three special variables four and even up to the nth right so for instance when you have three special variables that means in three dimension the diffusion equation is simply del p del t is equal to d del squared p del s squared plus del squared p del y squared plus del squared p del z squared 
so it's very simple right so now we know what diffusion is we know what the diffusion equation is and what it does and we know how to write the diffusion equation right so how do we derive it how can we derive it so in this video we are going to learn how to derive the diffusion equation with one special variable but if you understand what we do you can later on expand it expand it to two um special variables and the rest okay so before we go through how to derive the diffusion equation we are going to take some definitions okay but one thing that i want you to notice that there are several ways or methods used for achieving this but we will use the fixed law to derive the diffusion equation okay so as i said we are going to use some definitions and laws to help us with the derivation so before the derivation let us take some definitions which will help us out so first what is flow so flow is a quantity of something example fluid per unit of time passing the point okay so that is what a flow is then what is flux so flux is the flow per unit area so the flux of a material can be cells number of animals amount of chemicals number of human beings etc right so that's what a flux is then let's come to a very important law which is going to help us in deriving the diffusion equation the fixed law so the fixed law of diffusion states that the flux g of a material is proportional to the gradient of the concentration of the material thus so we are seeing that mathematically we are seeing that the flux g is proportional right to the gradient of the concentration of the material so the gradient means the derivatives so <clears throat> mathematically this is how we express the fixed law of diffusion okay so when we introduce an equality sign to take away the constant the proportionality sign right that means we are going to get actually we are just considering it in one dimension so that means we have just one special variable so in one dimension we we'll have g of xt will be equal to negative d del c x t del x right so since we are interested in deriving the wave equation in one special variable this is how we are going to write the um fixed law where c of x t is the concentration of the species and d is the diffusivity or diffusion constant so for instance if we are deriving the diffusion equation in two dimensions or having two special variables then we can write the fixed law as this so c of x y t then plus the y c of x y t so as i told you it's very simple to expand the knowledge in one dimension to two dimension okay all right so the minus sign indicates that diffusion transports matter from a high to a low concentration do you get it mm -hmm. then a very important equation which is going to kick start uh, derivation is the conservation equation which states that the rate of change of the amount of material in a region is equal to the rate of flow across the boundary plus any that is created within the boundary all right so um let's say we have um this region here all right so s naught x1 x right and 
we have water here and water at this end so you could see that when you place the water here and the water at this end right they are going to flow across the boundary right and sometimes we can have some of the water here some of them can be created within the region or not okay so we are going to assume that the region is s naught less than x less than x1 as we just talked about right so for instance when you put the um particle here right we are considering horizontal motion so after some time it will move to the left and some of them will move to the right okay so that is what you can see here so if the region is x not less than s less than one and no material is created and we are assuming that no material is created right but <clears throat> when it comes to deriving the diffusion reaction system we will assume that mater material is created but in this case we are assuming that no material is created so since no material is created then the statement that we had the conservation equation is given by del del t integral from x naught to x1 c of x t dx which is equal to j of x naught t minus j of x1 t right so this one is because we are deriving the wave equation in one dimension that's the reason you can see that c just depends on x and t just one special variable right so if you want to derive the wave equation for two special variables you can extend this so that c will be a function of x y and t we have two special variables and what have you so that's why i said if you understand this you can always extend it to derive the wave equation in two special variables three and what have you okay all right so the um conservation equation that we stated all right with the assumption we made mathematically this is how we represent it all right and this equation too is what is going to kick start our derivation of the diffusion equation which is very very simple okay all right so we are setting x1 to be equal to x naught plus change in x all right so wherever we find x naught it will be x1 to be equal to x naught plus change in x and that's true right and we divide by change in x and take the limit as change in x approaches zero so you could see that this statement here means that we are trying to what differentiate each side right so we are differentiating each side because when um with the first principle right so it's given by limit as each approaches zero x plus h minus f of x all over h right and the h here is just changing what x so that means whenever we do something like this you are trying to what differentiate so you could see that when we do that to the left hand side we are differentiating the integral sign and you know differentiation and integration are opposites so when we do that that means the integral sign will go away right so we just have del c del t so this statement here is very very important that is what takes away the the um, integral sign here so you are going to get del c del t will be equal to then we said that we are going to div, um, set x1 to be we are letting x1 to be x0 plus change in x right then you can see that here we're having change in x0 minus j x1 of t but here we want to bring this one first that's why we have the negative sign here all right because when it comes here then this will be negative and this will be plus all right so here is the same as j of x1 but here representing x1 with what x naught plus change in x then comma t so that's what you can see here all right then we say we we'll divide through by changing x and we'll take the limit as changing x approaches zero so that gives us this equation here 
I hope you see that and your understanding is very clear, alright? So because that's simple, right? So you could see that per the definition of um the derivative, right? This right hand side here is the partial derivative of G with respect to C um X, sorry. The partial derivative of G with respect to X. So that means that this thing here can be written as del C del two be called negative del G del X. And we call this equation three. Alright. So recall from the fixed law that from the fixed law G is equal to negative D del C del X. So that means wherever you find G, we can put negative D del C del X there. Alright, so making substitution into equation three. We will get del C del 2 be equal to minus del del x. Now J is the whole of this. Minus D del C del x. And I think you are seeing what I'm seeing that we've derived our diffusion equation. So we get del C del T will be equal to. So minus minus will give us D. And del times del C will give us del squared C. Del x del s will give us del s squared. And we get this, which we are calling equation 4. An equation is for is what we call the diffusion equation, right? So, as I told you, we have several ways where we can derive the diffusion equation, and this is one of them, where we use the fixed law. So, some people call this method the fixed law um, derivation of the um, the fiction derivation of the diffusion equation. Okay, so um, yes. That's the diffusion equation, and that's how to derive it. So you can try to see if you can use the same method we used to derive the diffusion equation if we have two spatial variables, x and y, or in two dimension. Okay. All right. So this is going to help us a lot in uh, our next video. That's the reaction diffusion system and later in fisher comma growth equation so in our 10th lesson we'll learn how to derive the reaction diffusion system and we we'll also extend that in our 11th lesson to derive the fisher comma growth equation and perform some analysis on them all right so thank you very much and i'm going to can we know a final year student of mathematics key and usd i'd like to say a very big thank you to my lecturer dr benedict Barnes, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos. So, see you in the next lesson.